Hey everyone, Jeff here. Just wanted to throw together a quick demo to show you how to create an estimate for the new Windows Virtual Desktop that just went generally available a couple of days ago. Um, so the first thing you're going to want to do is go to azure.microsoft.com and then at the top you'll select pricing. That'll take you down to the Azure pricing. Select pricing calculator and then what you're going to need to do next is go into the menu bar on the left hand side and you're going to select compute. At the bottom, you'll find the Windows Virtual Desktop, and in, when you click on it, it'll add a estimated price and services down here on the bottom. Um, I've got one already done, so let me delete that one. Um, by default, the initial settings are going to show up here, and I actually did that wrong, so we're going to delete this. Go back, Windows Virtual Desktop. There we go. So now we have the default settings, um, East US 2 and pooled. And then, of course, you'll see the number of users, peak concurrency, off-peak concurrency, usage hours, scenarios, uh, virtual machines, building options, managed OS disk, and then support and program offers. So starting at the top, um, you can change the region to whatever region you need it to be. And then you can also select between pooled and personal. You can also click on the little information icon here to give you a description of what each of these things mean. Um, but for all intents and purposes, pooled as it sounds, means you're taking 500 users and spreading them about, uh, spreading them out amongst uh, a different number of virtual machines. So in this scenario, 500 users are going to be using 31 instances and the price 1940. If we change it to personal, it is going to assign a virtual machine to each person and it's gonna be expensive, 19,520 for this situation. So for this demo, we're going to use pooled and we're going to bump this down to 150 users. Now, one thing to keep in mind, uh, you can't go below 100. So if I get to 100 and I try to go down, it, it won't let me. But if you notice the price at 517 for 100 users, you can go in, type in 25, but don't hit anything. If you have a mouse wheel, mouse down, because if you click, if you left click on the page, it's going to disappear. But mouse down and it'll give you the price for 25 users. So I'm not really sure why that's happening. I guess it was just a default setting that was uh, input into the calculator itself, but um, to keep everything kosher, we're gonna go with 100 users, which is the, the default, or I'm sorry, not the default, but for this demonstration. Um, peak concurrency and off-peak concurrency, this is basically saying that 90% of the 100 users are going to be using this service during peak hours, and then 5% or five users are going to be using this during off-peak hours. Um, under usage hours, it starts at 220. Now, in a year, there's 730 hours. So if we take a look at uh, the pricing for PageGo, $215 for this scenario at $5.17 per user. Now, wait a minute, why is, uh, why is one year more expensive? Well, that's because one year and three year reserved instances are based on 730 hours, not 220. Um, and I'm going to spoke 730 hours per month, not 220 hours per month. So to get a baseline, we want to change this to 730. Um, obviously, probably not going to be using it uh, every hour of every day for the entire year. So this will be up to your partners to make that adjustment and changes. But for baseline services, this will give us a good estimate. Uh, so for a page go client, $1,000 when you're reserved, 717 and then a three-year price of 537. Um, so if you're going to be using virtual desktops, there's no reason not to go one year or three-year reserved instances on the virtual machines themselves. Um, for the scenarios, you've got multi-session, single session. Uh, this is only available if you are in a pooled environment. Um, it's going to change the pricing, um, but leave it as multi-session and then you can pick the, uh, the, the user workload type. So power user, medium user, light user, what I was told is that a light user in this situation is going to be a medium user, a medium user will be a heavy user, and then heavy and power will both be power because according to uh, some folks internally, that was uh, underestimated. <laughs> so keep that, uh, keep that in mind when you talk to your partners about this, that a light is probably not going to be enough for a light user. Instead, they should bump up to a medium. We'll leave it as the default medium for now. Um, the instances for the virtual machines, you can change it to any of the virtual machines that are available. Cheaper, more expensive, completely up to you or the partner. Well, not up to you, but up to the partner or the customer. 
uh, whichever ones they're more comfortable using. But we'll leave it as the default D2SV3, and we'll go back down and keep it as pay as you go. And then the managed OS disk, you'll have the choice of standard hard drive, standard solid state drive, or premium solid state drive. Um, standard SSD pretty much is going to be the status quo uh, for the majority of customers under 500 users. Um, if you have power users or other people, again, you can take pooled and personal and mix them together, but you won't be able to do it on the same quote. Um, the disk size you can change uh, for that managed OS disk. Now, once you get done with all this, with a pooled environment, you will want to run a virtual machine for storage. Uh, that's going to be for your uh, for profile storage and things like that. So the recommended amount of storage per user is 20 gigabytes. Um, and then, of course, if you want high availability, you'll need to run two virtual machines for the for the storage itself. So it can either be they recommend not using um, file file storage the file storage of virtual machines, but rather, what is it, uh, Azure NetApp, uh, that actually is a little bit less expensive and uh, can can certainly handle what we're trying to do with these Windows virtual machines. From a support aspect, uh, the partner will be able to choose this, but of course, if they're going through CSP, they're going to want to, you know, they're going to want to support it themselves. Otherwise, if they choose one of these, they have to pay for it uh, directly with a credit card. So we'll leave it as included. And then the programs and offers online services agreement, which is what the customer would see if they came in themselves. A customer would not be able to see CSP, EA, or NCA. But if a partner is putting this together, they can choose CSP. And it'll give them the percentage that they can mark this up. And of course, it drops their price too down to the CSP price. And once you get all that completed, you can choose to export it, save it. I would export it and put everything together with the virtual machines and the Azure Active Directory, which is something that they do have to have. Uh, so if you go over to the, the virtual desktop um, overview, what is virtual desktops, you can see a list of the requirements. So the infrastructure does have to have an Azure Active Directory. If they've got an Office 365 account, they have that. And then of course you can see the required licenses that they have to have um, in order to use this as well. So all the E3, E5, A3, um, licenses, and then of course your Microsoft, and these are Microsoft 365, so not Office 365, uh, but those will get it taken care of. And then of course you've got your Windows E3 or E5, and then A is just academic. So none of the Office 365 plans come with the VDA rights. And the only thing with um, volume licensing is the RDS Cal with software assurance. So this is a good opportunity to get net new seed ads by offering this service for partners or upsell opportunities from other Office 365 plans. Also keep in mind that you can use the Azure CSP POC for the Windows Virtual Desktop. And then there also is a Windows Virtual Desktop Lighthouse funding program, but it's for 500 or more users. Um, if anybody has any questions about any of this stuff, or I rambled a little bit too much and you got bored, and you're like, Jeff, I just want to see this later. Can you show it to me? I'm certainly happy to, but uh, hopefully this helps.